So now we've learned what an Excel table is and we've seen some of the benefits of putting our data into an Excel table, it's time to go through exactly how you put your data into a table and we'll also go through some tips and tricks when working with Excel tables. So you can see in the spreadsheet just here we have some employee data and this currently is an unformatted data set and maybe we want to perform some kind of analysis on this data. And as I mentioned in the last lesson, I would always highly recommend that you put any data set that you want to analyze into an Excel table first. Now, when it comes to actually formatting this data as a table, we have two different methods that we can use. If we click our mouse anywhere within this data, go up to the Home tab, notice in the Styles group, we have a Format as Table dropdown. So when we click this, it's going to open up a big gallery with all different kinds of table styles that we can apply. And by selecting one of these, it will do two things. It will convert our data into an Excel table, but it will also apply some formatting. Now, the different color schemes that you see in here, these are very much based on the theme that you have in use within Excel. So let's just take a look at that for one moment. If we go up to the page layout tab, notice we have a themes group just here. And when we click the themes drop down, you're going to be able to see the theme that you have in use. Now, for most people, the default theme is just going to be this office theme just here. And it is worth noting that this office theme has changed in the last couple of months. Microsoft released an update for Microsoft 365 users. So we now have a different set of theme colors as a default. And if we go to the Home tab and just click, let's click the Fill Color drop down, you can see that these are the new theme colors. It's also worth noting that with this new Office theme, we get a new font as well. So instead of the default being Calibri, the default is now Aptos. And that is exactly what I have in use in this spreadsheet. So the point I'm trying to make here is if you don't like the colors that you see when you click the format as table drop down, maybe you want to use something else, you can simply change those by changing the theme that you're using. So you could choose one of these other themes. Let's go for let's go for facet, for example. And now when I go to the home tab and click format as table, I get a different set of theme colors. So just be aware of that. I'm going to switch mine back to the default office colors. So when we click on format as table, I can choose one of these. Let's go for this green one just here, dark green table style medium four. Now, as soon as I click this, Excel is going to do its best to work out where my data is. And if you're clicked inside your data set, it should select everything around the outside. Now I need to confirm that this is correct. So it says, where is the data for your table? And then it's giving me a cell range and I can see the marching ants around the outside. So this is correct. It's also worth noting that you must have my table has headers selected if your table does in fact have a header row. So let's click on OK and my data is now in a table. How do I know? Well, check out my ribbons. I now have a table design ribbon. And on this table design ribbon, we can do many different things. I could change my table style from here. So if I decide I don't like this green, I could go in and maybe choose something else. So let's go for this blue. Notice we have some table style options and some of these little check boxes are already selected. Notice here filter button is selected because when you put your data into a table, it's automatically going to add these little filters to the top of each column. And these are really, really useful. For example, if I just wanted to see in this table only the people who work in, let's say, HR, I can use this filter to select HR, click on OK, and it's going to filter my list. Notice as soon as I do that, I get this little filter icon. If I want to clear the filter, I can choose clear filter from department to put everything back. So those filter drop downs are really useful. But if you don't want to have them on your table, you can simply deselect the filter button from table style options. I quite like them there, so I'm going to keep this selected. Notice also we have header row selected. If I deselect this, it's going to remove that header row from my data set. Another cool feature of tables is that we can add a total row. So if I click total row, notice what happens to my data set. I get a new row added to the bottom and it's giving me the total of all of the job ratings. Now, in this instance, that doesn't particularly make much sense. I'm not really going to want to add up the job ratings. 
but I might want to add up all of the salaries just to get an idea as to how much we're paying in total for everyone's salaries. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course, and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. If I click in the total row, notice we get a little drop down just here. If I click it, I can choose to sum all of those salaries. We have other options in here as well. Maybe I want to find out what the average salary is. I could do that also. And I don't have to have anything in this job rating column. I can simply choose none. So that total row can be really nice. and is a quick way of performing calculations on table data. Now, in this case, I don't want a total row. So let's just deselect that from table style options. Also notice that with this particular table style that we've applied, we have alternating row colors. And this is what we refer to as banded rows. Now, banded rows in general improve the readability of your data. It's easier for people to read across lines. But again, if you don't like the way that this looks, you can simply deselect banded rows in table style options and it will remove those bands. You could instead have banded columns. We have a little option for that and it's going to give us alternating column colors. We can apply formatting to the last column of data. It's going to make the last column bold, or we can apply formatting to the first column of data. So that is what all of these little table style options do. Now, the external table data ribbon, this is where we can do things like export our table data to SharePoint lists. Now, that's outside the scope of this particular course, but just be aware that that button is there. Also notice we have a refresh button just here. So this enables us to quickly pull through any updates to this table. In the tools group, this is where we have things like summarize with pivot table. So if I wanted to create a pivot table based off of this data, I can do that from here. I can remove duplicates or I can convert my table to a range. So this is really interesting and a question that I get all the time. Sometimes people will put their data into a table and then they'll say to me, Deb, how do I take it out of the table? I don't want it to be in a table anymore. Well, this is this button just here. So let's click it. It's going to say, do you want to convert the table to a normal range? I'm going to say yes. And that effectively takes it out of the table. Notice that when I'm clicked in this data, I no longer have that table design ribbon. Now, whilst it does remove the table, it will keep the formatting. If you wanted to remove all of this formatting, you could select everything, control A, go to that clear formatting button that we've seen previously and click on clear formats. And we're basically back to where we started. Now, this is a really good opportunity to show you the second method when it comes to creating a table. Because instead of using home and format as table, we can simply use the keyboard shortcut control T. Again, it's going to give us that same little create table pop up. I'm going to say yes, my table has headers and I'm going to click on OK. Now, the table style that you get when you use the keyboard shortcut is basically the default table style. So for me, that is this blue color just here. Once again, now we have the table design ribbon back. We could go in and we can change that to something else if we want to. So now we have our data in a table again. I'm just going to apply some formatting to the salary column. And this is another little tip. When you're working with table data, it makes it a lot easier for you to select your columns and your rows. For example, if I want to format everything in this salary column, instead of selecting all of the cells, I can simply hover my mouse over that table header and notice I get that little black downward pointing arrow. Click once, it's going to select everything in that table column. I can now go to home and I can apply whatever formatting I like. So I'm going to apply counting number formatting and I'm going to take the decimal places down to zero. The final thing to point out here and another thing that I would advise you to do is to give your table a meaningful name. If you take a look on the table design ribbon in the first group here, the properties group, notice that my table is currently called table two. And this is just Excel's generic default name. So if I was to create another table, it would be called table three. The next table would be called table four. 
Now, whilst you can leave them with those generic names, it makes each table really hard to identify later on. If I was to come back to this spreadsheet in six months time and I want to work with a specific table, if it's just called table two or table three, I'm not really going to know what table that refers to. So I would always recommend giving your table a more meaningful name. So I'm going to click in my data. I'm going to go up to table name and I'm going to call this employee underscore data. Now it's worth noting with these table names, you can't have any spaces if you have two words. So I have two words, employee data. So I've separated them with an underscore. I could also just have them like that all as one word. I'm going to keep the underscore in. Hit enter and your table is now named. So those are two methods for putting your data into a table and some of the options that you have on that table design ribbon. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.